This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be talking fun stuff. You could even maybe say an idea for the holiday season. I don't personally celebrate the holiday season, but like Christmas and stuff like that, but um this is a fun one. We're going to be re we're going to be unboxing first impressions and reviewing Cacherelles. <laughs> yes, I am. They're kind of new offering within their world of weird perfumes that they kind of now cater to for the Instagram community, I guess. Anyway, let's get to the review. Of course, before we review it, let me quickly announce that you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you haven't already, please consider because, well, 7% of y'all or 8% of you who are anyway watching me are subscribed to my channel. If 20% were subscribed, we would have over 100,000 subscribers by now. Furthermore, if you wish to help the channel uh, grow, you could also become a member of the channel. There's extra perks for members and different tiers as well. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob all spelled together. I would like to thank all my members who have already joined and pledged, as well as my patrons. All right, guys, let's get to the video. We're going to unbox... Cacharelles, yes I am. And we're gonna test it out. I'm reflecting lights everywhere here. So this is the perfume bottle in big, but it is, um, and I have been holding this archived for a couple of months now. I got this on a really huge sale. If I manage to find it again on Amazon, I'm gonna post an affiliates link underneath this video. But I got it like 50% off, I don't know, it was like super cheap. And so I, it was archived, it was stored away, and I thought I'm gonna, you know, do a live one day with it, It's because it's gonna be fun. It's a playful little bottle, this huge lipstick, and opening it together, and hearing your guys' reactions, because it's, it's funny. And since in 2020, the year in which I'm reviewing this perfume, and the year um, 2020 being the crazy year it is, um, I have rediscovered my love for Cacharel fragrances, in particular of the 80s and of the 90s, Lulu and Eden being my favorites. Now from the 70s, I would tell you um, Anais Anais is on that list, but more 80s and 90s are my time, so Lulu and Eden. And I thought, okay, let's give Cacharel, now you know, L'Oréal is the owner of Cacharel, so L'Oréal is bringing out these concepts for Cacharel, which are like, Mm. So they brought out this fragrance, which already has, believe you me, two to three flankers out. This one came out in 2018, but since it came out, like, they literally bring out a flanker a year, or sometimes even two. But I wanted to review the first original one, right, with the red lipstick. They changed the color of the top lipstick according to which flanker it is. So yes, I am. First edition has that passion red lipstick color on it. Now this particular bottle, I don't want to damage it, is actually made as a bag, right? This is, if this were a Chanel, it would cost $20,000 probably, but of course it would be made a little bit better maybe. But so this is made as a bag. And how do we get this off without damaging it? Didn't expect this to be this hard. Girl. Okay, well, they were not thinking. Hold on a second. No. <laughs> really? Are we going to keep these little wings on? Because I think to take this off, this is too risky. I don't want to scratch everything. Oh, God. Okay. Got it. So this little... Messy, ugly thing. I actually squished my... Well, did I damage this? And I don't think I did. Okay, so... You literally take this off. Oh, my God. I mean, it, it's, it's made in China. What do you expect? It's full of plastic bits that make no sense. They're positioned in such a cheap way. So... The container is. I hope the liquid is made in France. Okay, so it has a sticker. All right. And then we have the Yes I Am logo all over it. I hope this doesn't break now. Really? Okay. 
So that's the bag, right? You're supposed to wear it crossbody, or I mean, you're not supposed to wear it. This is really flimsy. It's probably, it would break off. And now I'm gonna try to figure out how to open it. I think you open it here. The box should have instructions. Yeah, I think you're supposed to clip, clip it open here. Okay. Hope nothing falls out. Oh, so we get a little perfume body lotion together with the perfume. So we got the body lotion and we get the perfume and we get this kind of printed background which is supposed to... Oh no, it's actually glittery for real. The lips are glittered up. Um, there's a bit of glitter that does fall off. Can we see it glittering a little bit, glistening, reflecting the light? Yeah, you see it a little bit. Okay. Anyway, so let's take the perfume bottle out. <laughs> Even that is hard to do. There's no way, you guys. This is so poorly done. There's no way of getting this out without potentially damaging it. Boy, what a fun review this is turning out to be. Okay, now put you down. I can't take it out, you guys. <laughs> it's stuck in there like, it's like, oh, you're not gonna review me today. Well, think again. I'm gonna review, this is the last thing I do. Oh, got it, okay. So this is how it looks when it's out. You have this little silvery thing in the back. Okay, terrible container. So, um, this is the lipstick bottle, and the sprayer is right back here. So, there's no lid to take off. Meaning, um, oh, this is a nice little touch, little Cacharel logo kind of dented into the top of this lippy. So, you got to push it down here. There's nothing really protecting it, is there? All right, so basically, huh. so if you have this in your bag, you're gonna spray all the liquid is gonna fall out of it because it's gonna get pressed by other stuff that you have in your bag because the commercial for this perfume, this chick, she's on the go, always busy moving on, always posting stuff on Instagram. In fact, this perfume was designed for the Instagram community. And um, she always has it in her bag, but like you just push it delicately in here, you see, and it goes down. The whole thing would leak. There's nothing to protect it on top. Anyway, let's spray it on. Oh wait, on this side, because here I sprayed something else. <laughs> well, I keep missing the... Oh my god, I sprayed too much of it. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a moment. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mood. It's very fruity. Um... Yeah, very fruity. In fact, it's telling me here, raspberry, mandarin, orange, lemon, and bergamot in the opening notes. Raspberry, raspberry, raspberry. Let me tell you. Raspberry. Mm. Then it tells us middle notes. Gardenia, ginger, flower, amber, jasmine, rose, and orange blossom. Then it tells me base notes. Milk, caramel, vanilla, cardamom, licorice, coumarin, sandalwood, benzoin, and amber wood. There's a lot going on in here. Well, we're just in the opening notes. We've got to give it some time. Let that kind of, all those fruity opening notes dissipate. I'm really looking forward to sensing out the gardenia in this one. The jasmine, I'm sure they did not use a really expensive jasmine, but I'm looking forward for the jasmine. I'm also looking forward to the milk mixed with the caramel and the benzoin touch in the dry down because I think that could make it or break it for me when it comes to this one. It is a relatively inexpensive fragrance, mind you, because it often hits sale. Oh, it's leaking, okay. Cha. Anyway, um, so you, you know, wait for it <laughs> to go on sale because it goes on sale in rotation. I got this weird uh, bag a thing. Um, for like 60%, 50 or 60% off, so it was, I got it for around $30, the whole thing. I thought it was kind of cute to have the lipstick. And lipstick, I don't know. 
Anyway, it was cheaper to get this set than to buy the bottle alone because the set was on sale, you know what I mean? So try to find a set if you're interested in testing this perfume rather than buying it single because oftentimes the sets after Christmas or what have you, they go down in price because they want to get rid of them. Which is the case for this one. In fact, I got this one many moons ago. It was, a, it was like one of those Easter, I think it was like an Easter off, like after Easter on sale. Or it was, no, no, no. It was after St. Valentine's Day. Uh, this was kind of, I think... And then they it went on sale around Easter. It was on sale. I don't know. Anyway. Is it groundbreaking? No. Have we smelled something like this in the past? I mean, in these past five, six years? Hell yeah. A lot of it. It's very teeny friendly, I would say. It's very user friendly. It has a hint. It's like a toned down version of Poison Girl by Christian Dior. But it also has um, more, it's kind of um, less much, I mean, Poison Girl was already very girly, but this one is even less mature. Like, it's even more easygoing, lighthearted. It's a perfume that I would totally see olive oil wear. It's very pleasant. And we've had it on, what, five minutes? On the hand, and it's turning already, you know, it's becoming very, very pleasant. That fruity opening, bitey note is gone. It's cute. It's cute. I mean, it's not offensive. It Maybe if you overspray it. Well, I did overspray it. But it's not intoxicating. It's not too hard or harsh. Debbie says, Mmm, a gourmand floral. Uh, yeah, you could call it a gourmand floral, definitely. Especially if you add the, uh, the caramel and the milk and the cardamom and the licorice. And then all of those flowers in the mid notes from the gardenia to the rose, like they, they're all there together, but they're all synthetic. Girl, for this price, they got to be. But L'Oreal knows it's synthetics. As you know, as I always say, they did a wonderful job with uh, the reformulation of Lulu. Cacharel's Lulu in the current state that L'Oreal makes is wonderful. I love it. Great reformulation. Great reformulation. I. Of course, I prefer Lulu to this, but this, if you get it for a really cheap price, don't buy it full price. It's really, really pleasant. It's nice. It's fun. It's whimsical. As I said, olive oil. She would wear this one. I totally see her wearing this. It's, it's nice. It's really nice. L'Oreal, you did a good job for Cacharel. You did not do Cacharel dirty this time. I have to say. What are your comments, guys? Tested it and it did not smell very good. I mean, it is mediocre to me, says Robert. Daniel says, I'm loving the lipstick container. Robert says, the bottle is beautifully tacky, though. It is beautifully tacky. I mean, and if you're really into this sort of shtick, into this sort of slapstick type of comedy when it comes to perfumery, then you would want to collect all of the flankers because they have the different colors. And even the bottles are tinted slightly different. But I've smelled the... Flankers, no. This is the way to go. The first one is the best, up until now. Um, <laughs> Debbie says, oh yes, gloriously tacky. Daniel says, uh, will forceps help offer the opening of the thing? I didn't want to break it because you guys, listen. It's like the thinnest little metal. And what I didn't, uh, mention in um, when I was unboxing it uh, in the place where I got this they had to bring out five of them until I found one that did not have very visible flaws they were so poorly produced they had dents in them they were broken bits chipped off like really this is a really cheaply produced product so I already had to ask for many of them till I found one that was decent enough to be taken into the Fashion Bunker archives. So that's why I was being also extra careful in opening it because I have seen how they looked <laughs> already in the packaging. A lot of them were not happy bottles or not happy containers. So that's why I'm extra... And this is a lacquered metal. And it has a tin. It's literally a tin, you guys. If you like open it and close it too many times, the black lacquer is going to peel off. If you keep it in a humid environment, this metal is going to rust like it's nobody's business. Check this out. This little piece here, for example, is not even coated. This little tube, it's like exposed metal.
that keeps rubbing off of this metal, because this is also metal. So whenever they close, they rub against each other. Like, it's really a delicate piece. It's really meant to be bought as a gimmicky gift for Valentine's Day and then whatever, used and thrown away and forgotten. But I try to preserve these objects, obviously, for study purposes. Just for archival purposes, I think it's beautiful that they did bring out something like this, as tacky as it is. It works well. The giant lipstick with the little lipstick inside. Look at that. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so, Potts Pointer. Oh, dear. That looks like a cheaply made knockoff. Yeah, but it's not. It's the real deal, you guys. Oh, by the way, for who's interested, the batch code number for this little beauty is 38S301T. I don't know if we can see it. It's very tiny. No, we can't. It, it's like, no, I don't want to focus. Daniel says, if anyone wants a giant plastic lipstick handbag without the perfume, you can get one from either Amazon or eBay. There you have it. <laughs> uh, Swade Jones, this was wonderfully awful, but I still love your commentary. <laughs> Thank you, Swade. Putz Pointer, the container made in China, I bet. Yes, made in China. Yes. The perfume, however, please let it be made in France. Made in France, you guys. It says here at the bottom. I know it's super tiny. At the, underneath all of these instructions, like how long it lasts, it says made in France. Um, weird bottle everyday products. Reminds me of Moschino style. Yeah, it's very Moschino-esque. But I kind of really love the Cacharel logo up here. That's like, that That sells it for me, that beautiful Cacharel logo. And I love the old school Cacharel logo. This is just a C from Cacharel. Um, and then you have etched in the front, Yes, I Am the actual name of the fragrance. And then in the back, you have the Cacharel logo again, etched into the metal, and it is metal. The top, the lipstick is plastic, and then the glass is glass. It's a faded, printed fade, you see? They printed it onto the bottle, so you got the kind of dark hues and then going into these amber, not really amber, more like a blue, black, blue tint. So we do see the lip, the liquid in there. Okay, let's smell it now after some time has passed. You know what? I, I'm not minding this, you guys. It's okay. Let me let me read to you what Cacharel says about this, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> That's the name of the perfume. Yes, I am. Is an oriental floral fragrance and they got, they got, they had to go there for women. Now, perfumes are genderless. Perfumes know no gender, but you know, marketing. Cacharel is selling it as a thing for Yes I Am was launched in 2018. Yes I Am, the third time they're repeating it within one sentence. Yes I Am was created by Honorine Blanc and Christophe Reynaud. Top notes are raspberry, mandarin, orange, lemon, and bergamot. Middle notes are gardenia, ginger flower, amber, jasmine, rose, and orange blossom. Base notes are milk, caramel, vanilla, cardamom, licorice, kumarin, sandalwood, benzoin, and amberwood. Cacharel launches its brand new fragrance for women called Yes I Am, <laughs> announced as a strong aspirational portrait of femininity. Yes I Am comes in a black, smoky, finished, kilted glass bottle designed... Uh, to be reminiscent of a lipstick as the most iconic object of a woman. Really? This is the most iconic object of a woman? L'Oréal, you can do better. The juice promises to be a sensual and modern oriental spicy one. Fruity top notes include man mandarin zest and sweet raspberry. The heart develops with white floral accords, ginger flower, jasmine, gardenia, and amber on a spicy and creamy agreement of notes that forms the base. Milk, sandalwood, cardamom. Cacharel Yes I Am is available as of March 2018 in a heavy glass bottle with dirty pink juice as a 30, 50, and 75 ml eau de parfum. Well, there you have it. That's what they tell us. Um, has anybody, except for Robert, already tried it? Anybody has any opinions on it? Weird bottle reminds me of Moschino Sa. Yes, I am. A uh, what? What are you? <laughs> Debbie says Caleb, says, Caleb says, remind me of my favorite VCA orchidea vanilla, especially with the Mandarin note. 
it's playful, it's soft, it has that caramelly, milky tone that is coming out slowly now as time is passing as I am smelling it. Um, it's it's more pleasant than Poison Girl because it's not as heavy as Poison Girl, but it's it's in the same family to me, and uh, it. It can be worn by very young people, for sure. But it can also, you know, it's also very reminiscent of early 90s fragrances. To me, it has, eh, late 90s. Scratch that. More late 90s. It has that vibe. It has that chemical vibe in it. That, um, like the era, mid to late 90s, when Jean-Paul Gaultier, he had already released... Classique, and then a couple of years later he releases Le Mal, and then the perfumes that followed, that storm, the whirlwind, that was Gautier launching his first fragrances. Boy, what an era. Anyway, after, shortly after that, fragrances similar to this, not in the same heart as this one, but there's a, simil there's a, there's a certain type of vibration to this one. A, a, a certain type of artificiality to it that is very reminiscent of fragrances in the second half of the 90s. You know, like when Dolce & Gabbana brought out their Zebra for men and the Maculato um, version, the Leopard version for women, the Bi Dolce & Gabbana, there's that smell to it, like the female version, there's a little bit of... It, that's the vibe, you know, Dolce Vita, by Christian Dior a little bit also. There's that's going on here. And it kind of brings me back to the second half of the 90s, which I always, I like when a perfume has a sort of a time travel element to it, uh, whether it be a cheap perfume or an expensive perfume, whether it be um, a perfume made out of expensive ingredients or cheap ingredients. Whenever they have that quality to them, that kind of takes you back into a space and a very specific place, I like that. I enjoy that very much. It shows me character. So yes, it does have character, despite the fact that it's something that we've seen quite a bit lately. This one is done better than others. Of course it's done better. L'Oreal has a bunch of money. They have a lot of money. They can afford to do synthetic perfumes in a quality way. They can, you know... And this one, it's, for what it is, it's well made. For what it is, it's rounded. It has its... It has its character, it has its aroma, it has its little place, you know, it's it's not crazy, it's not over the top, but it's well balanced and well blended for a regular release. And I kind of like that, I don't mind that at all. If you're into a fruity floral with a, a caramel milk base, I don't smell the licorice out in this one. I know it's, it lists licorice at the bottom, but... If anything, there's a gummy, there's like a rubbery note in there, like a plasticky note, which is, of course, it's a synthetic note. That is, it blends interest in an interesting way for me with the caramel in the milk. But then again, I like when stuff goes a little bit conceptual. As you know, I like my Comte de Gasson conceptual fragrances as well. So I guess L'Oreal did not intend to put a synthetic tone like that chemical tone in here, but it kind of works for me, it makes it more interesting. Like a plasticky touch, just a touch of plastic. And of course, if you're having a plastic lipstick, it it fits. It I would have wished it to smell more cosmetic-y because it is a lipstick after all, so I would have liked it to have a an 80s lipstick smell to it. That would have been, a, I mean, a lipstick bottle, lipstick perfume that smells of lipstick, Yes, I would buy all the bottles available. Are you kidding me? Why hasn't anybody thought of this, you guys? I know there are perfumes out there that smell like lipsticks, but like a lipstick perfume, super boring. Lipstick bottle, the lipstick perfume is called lipstick and it smells of lipstick. As boring as it is, I would buy it. I think that's genius. Just say, this one doesn't smell like lipstick. It doesn't smell like makeup. It smells like late, eight, late 90s perfumes. There you have it, guys. Let's read a couple of comments before we end this video. 
Caleb, remind me of my... Oh, wait. Oh, my God. She's back, Andrew says. That Chanel Pottery lipstick smell is so good. Yes, but this does not smell like Chanel Pottery lipstick, you guys. This smells like Cacharel... Yes, I am lipstick. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you have it, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video, this cute little unboxing, first impressions, slash review. I mean... If I get really intrigued by this one, I'm going to revisit it and I'm going to wear it in a couple of weeks and then I might deliver another review review of it. But for now, the story it tells is kind of quite limited, quite frankly. So it's inoffensive. It can be enjoyed by many. It does have that 90s vibe, which is welcomed by me. And um, what is this, 50 mil? It's a 50 mil bottle. The amount of perfumes I have and on the rotation that they're on, I'm not going to use this up quickly. It's probably going to take me some time to to um, use up this this bottle. But I'm enjoying it. I actually like it. It's quite whimsical and fun. But this is a type of perfume. Ah, this is something I have to say though. This is the type of perfume that I would not wear at home. Really, this is the one to wear when you're finally back with your friends out and about interacting going you know to the restaurant going shopping together this is the type of perfume that you spend good time with friends and family that's you know going out being on the move on the go then this one is really good this is not the one you really enjoy in the comfort of your own home because it's dynamic in a way it has a dynamic aspect to it it makes you want to go out which I guess it's a, it is a good thing, but it, it's not a good thing when you have to stay indoors and you want to go out and then you have this to remind you that you want to go out. So keep that in mind as well. It's a very like, let's go out and meet friends bubbly type of scent. So guys, I hope you like this video. If you have, please do thumb it up. Let me know what you think about Yes I Am, the first release from Cacharel, the fragrance, not the flankers, uh, in the comment section down below. Or if you do prefer the flankers to the original release, let me know as well. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, here on YouTube. Here's somewhere in the description. Uh, subscription button is somewhere there. You can also become a member of my channel. Join today and get all the perks sent your way. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco all spelled together. Thank you so much to the members and the patrons who have joined already and pledged to the channel. Thank you, thank you. And don't forget to join me on Instagram. Super Deco all spelled together, as well as my other Instagram profiles. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, and the other one, Coco Chanel privé, all spelled together. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, never forget to never give up on lipstick love. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.